I get back there, try to grab it, and can't grab it, and the rod's going under. I think he had a, like a, I can't even remember. I think he had like a G. Loomis and Shimano. This is back before we had any sponsors or anything. Five, six hundred bucks. Dude, like I dive in off the off you the boat. You jump in the lake. Head first, dive, swimming against the current. So I was thinking this video, so I was like, okay, tomorrow video, which is what we're doing now, needs to be something interesting. I was like, we'll do another fishing tip like we did at Palatka. Got lots of feedback on that. A lot of, everybody liked it. Yeah, yeah. They really, really liked it. I had a lot of people co text me, call right. me, comment about that. Good. And they would like to have some on North Carolina, you know. Yeah. Well, that, uh, yeah, we're working on that. I know a guy. You, I do. Yeah, Brian Thrift. We could get him. He'll you probably know. give or some. Or Brian New. He won't Brian New? Hey, Brian New's giving the, giving the juice now, yeah, I heard. Actually, yeah. So, yeah, he, he actually came on our podcast after he won St. John's, and he talked more in that one hour than he has in his entire life. Really? And actually gave up the goods. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, he, he gave actually up the goods. told the truth. 100%. Yeah. Wow. But the tournament was over and he already won it. So, this is kind of a. Yeah. Well, it's on TV. And plus, it was just a stick worm <laughs> with a dang quarter ounce weight on it. It's nothing fancy. He argued with me. It wasn't like a chatter worm. Right. You know, but some special thing. He, <laughs> he argued with me before we went to Florida. I said, you don't need about five rods. I said, one of them needs to be a soft stick bait. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I don't know, man. I, you know, I, 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 he rigged up like 40-something rods. Right. So he had a mound. Just up. like thrift. Yeah, a mound. It's exactly like thrift. Yeah. Yeah, a mound, yeah. And he it's was looking. not a mound there. He was perfect. He was looking in my rod coffin. And I said, you thinking about getting a rod coffin? He said, no, I think I can build one. He said, but I'm going to need it. So the rod coffin I have, it holds 40-something rods. Right. Like rod and reel combos. And he gets up there, and he's like looking at it, and he's measuring it. And, you know. It, he's going to build one. Yeah, but he's like, I need to measure the width of my truck. And I'm like, why? He said, because I need to make, I want to make it as wide as my top of my truck. He's going to make the whole thing. He'll put 200 in there. He wants to put over 100 rods in there. True story. Goodness gracious. He wants to put over 100 rods in there. What he, happens if somebody breaks in? They, then they get 100 rods. Wow. So I was thinking like, okay, we can do fishing tip again, but you know, the practice here in Knoxville is so bad <laughs> that I don't even feel confident enough to even try to tell somebody how to catch a bass right now. It's pretty bad. It's mm, bad. It's rough. So I thought we'd hang out tonight and do a little deal with everybody. We just, just hang out and tell a couple fishing stories. You know, because... We've hung out for so long. We've done so many crazy things, and I just know that there's some good stuff that we can, we can, we can bring up. And and I know you've been mulling over some stuff in your head on what to talk about. Oh, I got stories for days, but don't get too excited about it. I do. Ha I do I do I'm just tired, <laughs> man. I'm just tired. I do have like one of the more interesting fishing stories. This is my younger days. So when when I first started fishing, I was fishing club tournaments and. I was fortunate enough to grow up on a small lake called Moss Lake back in Shelby. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's, that's you and Thrift fished all Thrift that. cut his teeth there. Andy Montgomery cut his teeth there. Um, so is it the key? Is it the key to the North Carolina success? Moss, Moss lake. lake. Moss Lake. I'm telling you. Here, because like every good fisherman that's ever come out of North Carolina has Moss Lake Moss in there. Lake. I didn't know Listen, that. this yeah. is this is it is, a big lake? I've never even been. It's on. a couple thousand acres. It's, it's real small. But the reason North Carolina, and we talked about this on our our last episode of, of Let's Talk Fish. Um, the reason North Carolina, I believe, and so does Thrift, so does New, we all agree that it's, the reason it kicks out so many good fishermen is because our lakes suck. <laughs> I'm serious. No, it's not. It's, we don't have a good lake anywhere. We have a couple in Raleigh, like Sharon yeah, Harris and Falls. Right. And dude, Norman, like, uh, My Norman's a great tournament lake. It's got a lot of fish, That's a but great like a big bag lake. there is 14 pounds. That's a great tournament lake. Well, Here's the thing about Norman. Like, they have tournaments there every weekend. They have a winter trail that, that fish on Saturdays and they fish on Sundays. Yeah. And on Saturdays, you'll have like 15 pounds wins it, 14, 13, 13, 13, 12, and then go back the next day, nine pounds wins it. Like, it's, it's a super conditional, very tough fishery, hard to adapt yeah. to, and you just have to fish on the fly all the time. Right. So I think that's why North Carolina kicks out a lot of really so, so Moss Lake. Moss Lake is the key. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Moss Lake sucks, so yeah. that's definitely a, it's definitely a big part. <laughs> it of, just sucks. Of, if you can catch them at Moss, it's like a giant farm pond. Every year, your Emily posts a picture of a giant, and you say Moss Lake special. I mean, it must be really good. Well, not, your wife catches big ones out of the back of your boat. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. Your wife catches big ones. 
I'm just saying. They go to Santee, <laughs> and they just take a picture where there's no sacrifice. Well, I mean, I around. wouldn't do that, but... So back to Moss Lake. So I grew. So that fetch I, must not really yeah, catch them. Yeah, no, That's what catch, I've been seeing on Moss Lake. It catches. I promise you, it catches. <laughs> okay. Them. And we'll do a video on that fetch for everybody. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll show everybody. You're gonna, gonna give some. You're gonna give some juice on some tips. When we go to Lake Fork, it's gonna. It's, I'll show you. You'll be wanting. So some. so that'll be the April tip. The April tip will be your fetch swim bait. Yes, absolutely. We'll do like a one-two punch video. Yeah. Okay. I like it. And then you can follow it up with all oh, your sight right. fishing secrets. The longest Sight. story in history of Sight. storytelling, Moss Lake. What was it? Where was I? Where, 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 where was I? <laughs> Moss Lake up. Oh yeah, back to Moss Lake. <laughs> okay, so I fished, and the the, the name of the club was <laughs> Bass. Name of the club was Basscasters, and we went up to Lake Hickory. Uh, what? Basscasters. <laughs> Basscasters. <laughs> Bass. With a B, casters. Uh, I, I want to take we, this in a different direction. So we went, bad, but I know I can't. <laughs> you regret asking me to tell a story uh, yet? I, well, I just yeah, we got to keep it. So keep it in the lane. Went to Lake Hickory Fish Club tournament, caught some fish. I don't even remember how I finished, but I had one. It was a four pounder, big, pretty, healthy fish, and I brought it back. I brought it back to Moss Lake, and we had a house on the lake. And that's where I grew yeah. up. And I turned it loose right there at that pipe, yeah. right, and it goes out there and just it stops right there on the pipe, it just sits there. Just sits so I'm like, okay, pipe. cool. So I go down there the next day. I get home from school, and I, I go down there the next day, and I go down there, and that fish is sitting there on the pipe, and I'm sitting there going, that's the same fish. I know no it's way. the same fish. So I took a, a goldfish. Remember Zoom made a color called goldfish? Yeah. Goldfish colored six-inch lizard, and yeah. I went down there and pitched out there, and it went, no. and I caught it. No. Same fish. Turn it loose. Goes back to that pipe, sits right there on that pipe. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious now. <laughs> this is Monday. This is Monday. This is Monday. Okay. Yeah, have you I named brought, him I brought that yet? fish. No, not yet. Him? I brought that fish home on Sunday. Yeah. I go back on, I didn't go Tuesday. I had something going on, soccer practice or something. Go back on Wednesday, fish is still sitting there. No way. I pitch out there. It bites and I shake it off. I shook it off because there's Thursday night tournaments on Moss Lake. Dead, this, <laughs> I cannot make this up. I go out Thursday night and I'm fishing with a, a, a buddy of mine named Randy Scarborough from the club, from Bass Casters, a club that we were in. Say that real fast for your time. Bass Casters. <laughs> real fast for your time. Say that, Mike. No. <laughs> you're, you're, where was I? You oh, and yeah, Randy. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, you you so, and Scarborough. So, yeah, we were on some fish. We went out and we caught, we had four keepers. Yeah. Okay, it's a three and a half hour derby, right. six to 9 30 at night. Yeah. We run out, we have four fish, and I was like, I know where we can get our fifth one. Yeah. And he's like, where? And I said, dude, there's a fish that I brought back from our club tournament last week in the Lake Hickory. I turned it loose at the house and it's been sitting on the same pipe for like five days now. And I said, I've done caught it once. I caught it once on Monday and I shook it off yesterday. And I said, I promise you it's still there. He's like, okay, whatever. You know, he's like, it's just a mass full of crap. So I went over there and I started dropping trolling under E's up there, sitting right on that pipe. No way. I pitched the same lizard over there that I caught her on on Monday. She eats it, jack her, put her in the box. We went and weighed in, won the tournament. Did you tell the tournament director I need that fish back? No, I did not take it back. And oh, it, that's it, what I was wondering. I, I didn't release it again. I, look, I felt bad because at this point, she was already starting to look a little rough, lost you just some weight. to go live somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, so I took she her to the landing. The landing's about maybe three quarter of a mile yeah. from where the fish was. How often do you still go down and look at that? She never made it back. The fish never made it back after that. I never did. You ever go down there and look at that pipe all the time? I caught a lot of fish off that pipe over yeah. the years. Yep. I wonder what's so special about that pipe. I don't know. And it, she she didn't make a bed. She wasn't on a bed. I mean, I don't. I couldn't see a bed. So that's funny. But it's the same fish. I mean, that's what crazy. That's good. The pet funny. fish. I thought you was gonna talk about. Did you ever but, name it? But Did Randy, the y'all got a pet fish on the the I just called it my. I just called it my pet. And Randy Scarborough, the guy that was fishing with me, he's told everybody and their brother that story that he's ever met. Do y'all call it the Moss Lake Monster? Mm -mm. LTF's got a pet fish. Y'all got pet fish at Roland. We do have a pet. We do have a pet fish named Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. I we feed him on the show. Sometimes. Feeding goldfish. Well, members. they're feeder fish. Oh. They just happen to be gold. But the pet store's been closed lately, so we've been having to go to the bass shack and buy. Actual That's a good shiners. story. I'm I trying like to think it. of me one. I'm trying. To, I've got a bunch of stories. This is something. So here, here, guys. Look, we're just getting into this. If you like these little story times. Drop some comments below. Let us know what you think about it because we'll do some more because we've got endless. Oh, endless. 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 Yeah. And I mean, so, I, yeah, there's yeah. so many stories. And if we do them a little earlier where we're actually awake and kind of yeah. ready to go, it'd be better. You know, there's good stories where you really catch them and there's stories that just mean something to you yeah. too. Yeah. I fished, uh, everybody knows Clay Dyer. Yeah. 
Yeah. My buddy. Uh, yeah, everybody loves yeah. Clay. He used to fish all the time. When we, you know, whenever I've traveled with him all over the country, went to Mexico with him, El Salto. Right. Yeah, we fished everywhere. But he'd come to stay at the house for a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. Summertime, August. We fished a, like a, it might have been a six to ten to night term, like you're talking about, at Lay Lake. And we're the only two people I know who fish a four-hour tournament, and we run 30 miles up the river. So we waste, you know, we don't have yeah. long to fish. You waste an hour yeah. running. And it's hot. It's August. Clay, I love this. It's super hot. We went the day before, and I didn't know he could, I didn't know Clay could swim. He'd jump right off the back deck of the boat and swim around like crazy, yeah. just get right back in the boat. He has to cool off that way because he doesn't have as many, he don't have as much skin as we have right. to sweat for. For everybody, that, that Clay Dyer was born Right? He yep. was born that oh, way. Yeah. He was born that way. He was, it's an amazing story. You need to look him up. So so look up Clay Dyer. We'll drop a link in the description down below for his Instagram or Facebook yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You got to check this out. It's the most inspiring thing I've ever seen and been, been witness to, to see him drive a boat, fish, all the things he does. It's amazing. But yeah. he was born without one nub on, has, one, on his right side. He's got a, a nub and that's it. Yeah. No legs and basically no arms. And he fishes and drives a boat. He's got a callus. He's got a callus. Like, from here to here on his shoulder where he holds his rod. Yeah. He makes all his casts, bait casters, same thing we fish with. Right. Skip it under docks, make long cast Carolina. It doesn't matter. He does it just like we do. No special yeah. equipment. But anyhow, long story short, we run 30 miles up the river at Lay Lake. You're running lots of current. You're floating backwards, fishing current, pitching a jig. And I can't remember. I think I caught one or two. And I'm running up in the front of the boat, and he's on the back, and I catch a couple, you know. All of a sudden, Clay, I'm flipping a jig. He wants to do a brush hog. He won't let you do nothing. He's going to hook his own baits, everything, you know. Ties his own knots. He's down in the bottom of the boat, like I'm up here fishing, and I catch one or two, and he still ain't made a cast. Sweating, it's hot, takes his brush hog, dips it in some green chartreuse dye, gets it perfect, you know, perfect on the hook. Gets on the back deck and he makes a pitch right into the middle of a tree. I mean, right in the middle of a tree. Picks up on it and the fish is pulling him down. He sets the hook and he's sweaty, like super sweaty all over him. His rod hits the, hits the side of the boat as it's going in the lake. Just slipped right off. Of oh, he just slipped right off. You know, I think it's just hung on a limb or something. Yeah. The boat's going backwards real fast. I get back there, try to grab it and can't grab it, and the rod's going under. I think he had a, like a... I can't even remember. I think he had like a G. Loomis and Shimano. This is back before we had any sponsors or anything. Five, six hundred bucks. He was like, I dive in off the off you the boat. jump in the lake. Head first, dive, swimming against the current as the rod's going down trying to get it. And I get it underwater. And I come up and I'm trying to swim upstream to hold the rod because it's going to break yeah. off. The boat's gone because of current. Yeah. So Clay gets down in the driver's seat, cranks up. Drives up there and gets While you're me. in the lake with, with the his rod. rod. I just wanted to get his rod. Swims up. I mean, I'm swimming as fast as I can. He pulls up to me with the boat. I climb back in the boat. He pulls over into the tree. And I'm sitting there and the fish is still on there. Pulls down. No. Yeah. I get him unwrapped and boat flipped like a four-pound spot. <laughs> and we won the tournament. Really? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Pretty crazy that's story. A that's, that's a real story. I mean... That happened a long time ago. One of the best fish catches that I've ever been involved with, for sure. That That is cool. It was that pretty good. Cool. Yeah, and it's got nice. a lot of meaning because of Clay. Right. Yeah, Clay's been an inspiration to me. I mean, I've fished, like I said, all over the country, Mexico, all over the place. You never hear the guy say a bad word about how bad a day it was, how awful it is out there. Yeah. He takes every day and makes it the best he can it can possibly be. It's kind of like us complaining here. It's kind of silly, isn't it? It sort of is. Yeah. But we got a lot on the line. Yeah. You know, I mean, Matt got a great start to the year, but we got a lot on the line. Yeah. I mean, we got we, checks, we got a long, barely checks. We got, we got a long season, <laughs> but you can't handle. You did get checks. We got you did checks. Get checks, but you know, barely it, checks. It's a long season, but you can't handle many no. bad finishes like that. Speaking of fish catches, a funny story, a pretty funny story, with my dad, you know, my dad, he's so old school, right? But yet, you know, like you, and you know all these old school guys, oh, they, yeah. like we, we have, we have our fluorocarbons and we have our special rods and we have our really high end fishing reels and we have our custom jigs and all of our stuff all dolled up just right. 
you know, we're out there, we're out there, you know, our jigs right there making sure every strand's just right. And we're Counting the strands. Making sure it's got perfect. 50 strands right, right. left. Yeah. So dad and I, we go to uh, Lanier. We go to Lake Lanier. We're practicing for uh, ultimate match fishing. So he's got his boat and I've got mine. And we're going to, you know, eventually probably fish against each other at some point. So we go out and we launch that morning. We got like a day of practice. And it's clear, you know, Lake Lanier, the big spots. And I go, I'm going to go over here. And Dad says, I'm going to go in this creek. I'm going to go in that creek. So he takes off. Dad takes off and goes into one creek. And I go in the other creek. And I've got my 17-pound my, my fluorocarbon. I've got my jig all trimmed up, spider cut. I've got my special trailers and everything. Oh, I'm, I'm skipping under docks. And I'm catching a few here and there. Nothing crazy. And uh, about an hour goes by. And I said, I wonder how he's doing. So I called my dad. I said, hey, you catching them? And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 I'm catching them good. He goes, oh, oh, oh do you have any? I was going to call you. Do, you. do you have any? Do you have any Uncle Josh pork chunks? I go, huh? He goes, Uncle Josh, oh, Uncle Josh pork chunks. He goes, I, I got the, uh, the lids. The, li the lids on mine are all uh, rusted shut, and they're, they're all dried out. And I only got, like, one left. You got any? I said, Dad, they don't, I don't think they make it anymore. Like, maybe eBay. I, I don't think you can even order it anymore, like. What are you talking about? You catch real them pork. On. What are you catching? He's oh, I, I, I caught a five pounder, and then uh, next I got, dock, a, I got eight I, jars of that in my boat yeah, right now. Really? Yeah, I brought it for in this your tournament. boat. I brought yeah, because it for this cold tournament. weather. But yeah. this was like in April. <laughs> so Dad's caught like twenty pound bag at Lanier, and I go twenty pounds. I go, where are you? He goes right around the corner. So I said, I'm coming to you. So I drive over there, and he's he's flipping, and his rod. Okay, and my rod is lightweight, balanced, seven four floor carbon, all my stuff, you know, like all fancy. And I come around the corner and dad's got this musky flipping stick. It's a musky rod. Stuck it his, literally is for musky. in his gut like he's fighting yeah, a Yeah, and it's got the, he's got the big foam thing that he puts on. Looks like, let me see that mic. <laughs> Tell me that mic. It's like the, the butt of the rod looks like this. You know, it's just this big giant thing and he's, and he's flipping. And, and, I, and I pull up, I'm like, what is that line? It's glowing. It's like Glowing line. Big game. No. 25 clear blue fluorescent. Oh, fluorescent 25 <laughs> strand. Oh, clear, strand. Not clear, strand. Blue, clear blue. blue. Clear yeah. blue Deal. strand. Big game. Fluorescent. Musky rod. He got the that big from his buddy thing. Bill. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the jig, it looked about like that big. It was about that big. It looked like a baby squirrel. It had the Uncle Josh port chunk on it. And so my point is, out the window on, on thinking that you've got to be all technical, right? He destroyed them on, on, on flipping a baby squirrel. I mean, that's what it looked like. Uncle Josh Pork Chunk. They'd never seen it before. No, they'd never they seen just, it on that light. They just yeah. ate it up. That's ate it crazy. up. I laughed. I was like, I spent all that time getting all my stuff ready. And Dad's got 25 pounds. Not fluorocarbon, fluorescent. It's chalk, like chalky line. Yeah. With Clear Uncle Josh, fluorescent. real pork. Yeah, just goes to show you. And real pork. Those fish don't care. Mm -mm. We overthink it. We do. We overthink it. Fishing so many is times. so so simple. It's hard. Yeah. Sometimes we overthink it. Yeah. Sometimes, it's it, yeah. I mean, you can be real finicky sometimes. Yeah. Well, that's but when they want to eat, you're right. I mean, that's what. Oh, the, the, baby other day, squirrel. the other day, whenever you're catching a few of those fish, that feeding time, if you'd have fell in, they'd have ate you. If you'd have fallen in the like that, it just came up and bit your feet. It wasn't that good. <laughs> I don't know. It he wasn't gets, that he, good. He catches one. He gets on the phone with Scott, and he's like, "Hold on, I got another one." Yeah. Then he calls me, and he's like, "Hold on, I got another one." They wasn't all keepers. I mean, <laughs> getting a bite is a big deal here. Yeah, Clark, you're uh, Clark Clark nine, nine bass in nine minutes. No. Yeah. <laughs> now today, going toward Matt, he's flipping this jig. Like, like I can go two hundred yards, and he goes twenty. So I got this whole good looking bank. I, I go, as I'm fighting one, it jumps. Matt watching me, it's like a 12 inch. I throw it back. He turns it off every flip. He just doesn't know it. I'm sure no. he did. They were, <laughs> hey, how many did I catch coming at you? Three, like five? Two or three, three. Matt said, Why don't you quit catching them? I said, It ain't going to help you. I ain't yeah. caught one 14 inches yet. You caught one in that creek? One, early. So you ain't going back then, are you? No. I probably will. I just going to get my line stretched. I'll go there. Well, I'll I, give you that, that is so simple, it's hard. I think you could take a crankbait, whatever they bite the best, and we've all caught a few on a crankbait. Put your trolling motor down and not pick it up, and I think you'd catch five keepers. But none of us can do that. 
Right. Cause none of us are programmed it. to do that. Right. But you know what? I think here's the best advice, and I said it to Scott outside. If we approach, and you've had great success at Beaver Lake, if we approach tomorrow similar to Beaver Lake, we wake up tomorrow and we say, okay, I'm going to go down, I'm going to be around some fish, and this is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, it's time to do this, it's time to do that, it's time to do this. I'm just going to fish the conditions. If you can do that and fish your instincts, right. instincts will win this tournament. Yeah. I think the difference is this lake doesn't have near as many bass as Beaver does. No way, not even close. <laughs> so, so it but makes you it, still it, have to fish your instincts on this yeah, lake. Yeah, I agree. It's very, that, and that's what you and I were talking about. It's very conditional lake. It, it reminds me of Norman with way less fish, obviously. But right. it reminds me. I mean, when you ride around and look at it, there's there's a lot of little details that are pattern oriented, and once you pick up on that pattern, I think you can duplicate it. It, right. it reminds but me a lot of Logan Martin. That's not something that maybe you did today that you're going to do tomorrow. Right. You know, because I think the biggest thing too is for me, like instincts, right? And I love running patterns and I love running all that. But when you don't get bit, you know, like if, if, if this had a few more fish in it, even if they're small ones, where you're, at, you're going down a bank and you go, right there, I'm gonna get bit, there he is. And then you, then you go do a tree, like lay down a tree yeah. and you're like, oh, this looks good. Don't, there's one right there. Let me go run some docks. Don't, there's one, there's another one. But for me, I know y'all had a little bit better practice, but for me, I never could get in that groove. Now, hopefully tomorrow I can, and right. once that starts happening, it's amazing how you can see things yeah. so different. Just getting you a do. bite, yeah. whether it's a keeper or not, right. it does a lot for your confidence. Yeah. yeah, it does. i tell you one thing I learned this week by fishing this lake, how tough it is, we've all talked about it, is I understand completely, I really understand now, why when I go to Mud Creek at Gunnersville, there's all Tennessee tags. Yeah. They don't fish up here. <laughs> they go to Gunnersville. That's why we got so much pressure. That's right. I saw quite a few locals out there today. Was they all throwing umbrella rigs? Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Uh, everyone I saw was throwing yeah. an umbrella rig. One guy said he's practicing for a tournament. And you know, that's called an Alabama rig, even in Tennessee. So, Tennessee rig? No, it's an umbrella rig. Well, it's an Alabama Andy Poss, uh, it was invented right there at Pickwick. Yeah. So is that Tennessee or Alabama? Alabama. Tennessee River. Tennessee River. Why do you call it that? Alabama River. All right. We're going to go to bed. That is it. This wasn't much of a video, but hope you enjoyed the couple little stories there. Hung out with you guys a little bit. Uh, so you're going to watch this video. As you're watching this video, here's what's coming next. Practice is coming probably Saturday or Sunday. And then, of course, first days of the tournament are going to come shortly after that. So we're going to leave you guys with that. And thanks for hanging out. Thanks for... I'll get y'all some North. some North Carolina tips. Yes, soon. and we'll do uh, we'll do some really good fishing tips for, uh, next month. Sounds good. Alabama, we'll do them. All right, give we'll you see a mark. We're out of here. Bam! Bam! Let's go to bed. Me and you, McCoy. <laughs>